to Radio Blenna. We have a very special guest with us on today's program. Joining us today is Shannon Abada, the first Eritrean Winter Olympian. Shannon hails from Canada and he chose to represent his homeland. This is also the first time Eritrea is represented in the Winter Olympics. Shannon is a professional alpine skier who with hard work and dedication achieved his dream to become an Olympian and to compete in this year's 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Salamawit Andreas had the pleasure of talking with the Olympian and here's his amazing story. Shannon Obanai Abada, born in Alberta, Canada, has made history in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. He has made history on two levels. Shannon became an Olympian in men's alpine skiing and the first to compete in the Winter Olympics representing his country of origin, Eritrea. Shannon, welcome to Radio Blina. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking the time to sit with us and share your story. Before we begin our interview, I just wanted to give you and our listeners who may not be aware of Radio Blina some insight about the radio and its mission. Radio Blina is a grassroots online radio station that educates the bland people and global online community to raise awareness and develop and preserve the bland language and culture. The bland people are one of nine ethnic groups in Eritrea. The organization broadcasts educational and informational programs in the form of live and recorded video messages. Radio Blina caters to engage a wide range of audiences by working to develop and build leadership skills and assist young people to take ownership of their community. For more information regarding Radio Blina, please visit radioblina.org. Shannon, so our listeners can learn a little bit more about you, can you please tell us a bit about yourself? What's your full name, where were you born, and a bit about your background? My name is Shannon Ogbenai Abada. I was born in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. Um, I currently live in Calgary, Alberta, and train at Panorama uh, BC. I'm an alpine skier. I've been skiing since I was three years old, competitively racing since I was five, and I represented Eritrea in the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang. Shannon. You were born and bred in Canada. You are Canadian. You have as much right and alliance to Canada, yet you chose to represent Eritrea in the Winter Olympics. Why is that? So in 2011, uh, there was the opportunity for myself to represent Eritrea at the Youth Olympic Games in Innsbruck, Austria, and I, I thought it would be an incredible opportunity for myself to be able to compete in the Youth Olympics. Um, and as well as I, I felt really strongly connected to my roots and my heritage being in Eritrea. And, um, I, I thought it would be a good idea and as well as to promote winter sports for second generation immigrants as well as Eritreans abroad. I asked you this question, Shannon, as we are extremely proud that you as a young person are aware of your identity. Not only are you aware of your identity, but you have taken it one step further and showcased it to the rest of the world. This leads me to my next question. What has the support out there been like for you from the Eritrean community as well as the wider community? Um, it, it's been incredible. I've received an enormous amount of warm messages from Canadians, Eritreans, and people from around the world. Um, the Fort McMurray community was, was especially very happy that I would be competing in the Olympics and they um, they sent me a, a banner as well as some good luck messages and it's it's been um, really incredible and I never expected myself to be in this position or have um, that much support from people around the world. When did your passion for alpine skiing begin? When I was about ten years old and I first was in Calgary, things for me started my ability started developing and I really started enjoying being challenged in a different terrain and environment. And I think that's where I started to really enjoy alpine skiing. And um, every day I was striving to find that perfect line. And, uh, and I, it was kind of coming to my head that maybe this is something I can take further in the future. 
How were you able to manage your time in balancing your studies and training for the Olympics? A lot of it had to do with time management and uh, my parents being very, very strict on me on when I did my homework, when I trained, when I wanted to do any social activities. All of it, you know, came down to time management at the end of the day. And it has been a little bit stressful at times, but it's worth it at the end of the day. Tell us about your educational background. What are you currently studying? Right now, I'm currently studying uh, computer science, um, and I have a focus in information security. You have dedicated 17 years of your life to skiing. What has it meant to dedicate a large portion of your life to chase your Olympic dream? What kind of dedication, sacrifice, and commitment does it require? For me, it, it, I'm very proud. It, there's no really words to describe how it feels that I was able to get to where I am today. It, it definitely has taken a lot physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, there's times where I, I cannot go to school. There's sacrifices made on my parents' part driving me to venues. Um, there's a lot of time spent in the gym, a lot of time um, uh, trying to rehab injuries and um mentally trying to convince yourself that you can push through but at the end of the day it, it was all worth it you've mentioned your parents being there driving you dropping you off what does it mean to have your parents and siblings support throughout your journey it means a lot to have my dad and my mom and my other siblings support me they've always been there since day one and they're my number one supporters they have been there in the toughest times and it means a lot that I, I have a family who's continue to day in day out give me their support how was your winter olympics experience overall what was pyeongchang like and the olympic village along with the other olympians and how did you go in all your races my, my experience going to the Winter Olympics was, was amazing. It was, it was nothing short of uh, extraordinary. It was, for me, when I, when I arrived there, there was a little bit of a culture shock, just because I'd never been in Asia before, but the, the Korean people were very welcoming and very kind and giving. I was, I was blown away by their generosity. In terms of my results, I was very happy with how I competed in my first event. The second event, unfortunately, didn't pan out the way I wanted to, um, but I was very happy that I was able to come there and have a solid result at the end of the day. The Olympic Village was really nice to have everyone together and meet new people, learn different countries, um, and experience different culture. In, in the Olympic Village, we in the dining hall, they have a, um, all kinds of food, Korean food, Japanese traditional American food. So it was it was good to have a mixture of things and kind of experience that. And I think that's what makes up the Olympic culture. What was your most memorable experience in South Korea? There was really a lot of good experiences for me. Um, I think the opening ceremonies was one of the biggest highlights, being able to walk out um, and carry the flag amongst the other nations. Uh, but one of the biggest things that I, I really enjoyed was one night with um, five or six other nations who had very few athletes. We all got together and went to a Korean barbecue restaurant and had a meal together. Um, it was nice to be able to uh, connect with those people, learn, learn their culture, learn their little bit of their background and have unity uh, with small nation. I think and that's what made up the Olympic spirit. Um, regardless if it's a medal or results at the end of the day, just being able to you know, set aside our differences and uh, connect with one, one another. Were there any other African nations competing at the Olympics? Yes, I actually met all the other African nations that were competing. Um, there was uh, an athlete from Togo, two athletes from South Africa, a Moroccan, two Moroccan athletes, um, and there was also an athlete uh, from Ghana and a team from Nigeria. You've stated in the past that missing out on going to Sochi in 2014 and injuring your leg to the point where you didn't know if you could ever ski again was physically and emotionally difficult. How was it that you were able to push through these challenges and accomplish your dream of becoming an Olympian? I think one of the biggest things for me that helped me push through was the support of 
both my parents, my dad and my mom, uh, day in, day out, giving me emotional support and convincing me that I could push through. I also had a very good support team who worked on me and helped me rehabilitate my knee. And on, on my point, it was, I think I, I had to really mentally convince myself that day by day, each, each step will make something better. You have accomplished what you have set out to do. So where to next? Where do you see Shannon in the next four years? Right now, I'm, I'm not so sure about what the next four years will look like for me. My goal was to go to Pyeongchang. That was a goal that I made almost four years ago, and I accomplished it. So I, I like to take some time off, kind of reflect, work on my school, and, and then I'll see where life takes me from there. Have you previously been to Eritrea? And do you have any plans on visiting soon? If so, where do you plan on visiting and what sorts of things do you want to do while you're there? So I've been to Eritrea in 2002 and in 2014. I certainly would like as soon as possible. I think it would be good for me to go there, try to connect with the youth and promote sports, regardless if it's a winter or some activity. I think my, my main thing when I do go there would be visiting some family and uh, reconnecting with some of my relatives, as well as trying to work with the Eritrean National Olympic Committee and trying to establish a winter federation. So maybe we could start promoting different sports with lists of ski, alpine skiing, maybe cross country or some other ice sport. Going back to the Winter Olympics, how were the Olympic Games and how was it competing with professional athletes from all over the world? It, it was an incredible um, experience, especially when we first walked in the opening ceremonies and saw the parade of different flags and people from different countries. It, it was it was incredible. I, n I never expected um, that much of an atmosphere. In terms of competing with uh, some of the best athletes in the world, it, it was... I think it was a good experience for me to rank myself up against those racers and see where I stood. And the majority of them were very nice and friendly. Uh, some of them even approached me on their own and gave me some really good advice. And I, I really enjoyed that and being able to connect with people and um, out in your sport and not actually be uh, rivals and be friendly with each other. It definitely made a positive impact on my life. Shannon, you have made your country and people very proud. Without a shadow of a doubt, all Eritreans around the world know your name, and you will go down in history as a pioneer, the first of your kind to represent Eritrea in the Winter Olympics. Your achievements showcase your hard work, dedication, commitment, and drive to live your dream. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you have many children, youth, and young adults who look up to you and probably wish that one day they would become like you. You are an inspiration, Shannon. If you had the chance to sit down with each and every one of them, what advice would you give to these youth? I think the, the biggest lesson that I tell them for the youth is to, if they have a dream or if they have something that they, they want, regardless of it's a sport or academic goal, the first thing they need to do is set a goal and work hard day in, day out. Do not be... Um, dissuaded by failure and only learn you can learn from failure and move forward and grow and one of the main things is don't don't take things too seriously always have fun in what you do because if you, you don't then there's really no point in doing it on behalf of radio blina and our listeners we would like to congratulate you on your success and achievements to date we are sure that this isn't the last we've heard of shannon abada and we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors before we complete our interview, are there any messages you would like to convey to our listeners? I think a message I like to convey to anyone that's listening is if you live in North America or Europe or anywhere that's snow, don't be afraid to take up winter sports or any sport in general. I think sports are a good way to teach you discipline and teach you some really good life goals. And you don't necessarily need to be competitive at it, but just take up sports and be active and healthy. I think it's great for everyone to try something. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time again, Shannon. Thank you very much. <laughs>